What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today I'm bringing you a video that I've been wanting to bring you for a long time. Today guys, I am fantasy booking Roman Reigns versus The Rock. Let's get right into it. Okay, so kicking things off, I just want to look into some context of my story. So, we are taking place currently. What this is, is basically I am booking what's happened on TV now and what I think should happen going forward. So, currently in my story, Jay Uso has just joined Roman Reigns, which hypothetically you would think that means Jimmy Uso has joined as well. So I've already got a little Samoan faction going on with Roman Reigns, the Usos and Paul Heyman. Also, Jay Uso has just taken out Daniel Bryan, uh, but it's not long term. Bryan is the first opponent I have for Reigns during this story. So now we've got the background stuff out of the way, let's get right into the first match of the story and we're starting it off strong with Daniel Bryan. Let's go. Okay, so WWE TLC is the next pay-per-view coming up after Survivor Series. Roman Reigns facing Randy Orton at Survivor Series has nothing to do with this. Uh, I'm not getting that involved at all during any of this. So I'll be kicking things off after Survivor Series where Roman Reigns is taking on Daniel Bryan at TLC. So... Reigns versus Brian at TLC. You know, Brian's going to come back from injury. I'm not going to go too into detail with these little side feuds. Uh, Brian's going to come back from injury, challenge Roman. Roman's going to be like, yeah, sure, whatever. They face at TLC and Daniel Bryan gets destroyed by Roman Reigns. Roman once again retaining the Universal Championship. So after that, you guys have maybe been noticing recently on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan has um, had someone coming after him trying to be his tag team partner. Kevin Owens trying to become a tag team partner with Daniel Bryan. Now, in this story, he doesn't necessarily succeed, but they're sort of alluding to it a little bit. So, Kevin Owens is his friend, I guess you could say. Now, after the matches uh, at TLC, where Daniel Bryan gets decimated by Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens challenges him the next SmackDown, basically saying, look, you injured my friend. I want to fight you. Uh, you know, fight Owens fight. He never backs down from a challenge and nor does the tribal chief. So Roman Reigns is going to accept his challenge and that will be for the Royal Rumble. Now, this is quite poetic because Roman actually challenged uh, Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship, the red version, at the Royal Rumble in 2017. So we're getting a Royal Rumble rematch for Roman versus KO with the Universal title on the line. This time, roles reversed. KO the face without the championship. Roman the Hill with the championship. So before the Royal Rumble, we're getting the build-up of literally Kevin Owens challenging Roman, uh, but each week he has to face one of the Usos. So we've got him facing Jimmy Uso one week. Um, he can win. He faces Jay Uso. Maybe it's a no contest. Then he faces both Usos in the two-on-one handicap match and he loses, but that is the go-home show. So typically people are thinking, hmm, do you know what? If they're booking Kevin Owens strong, normally the uh, if you've won on the show before, that normally means you're going to lose. If you lose on the show before, you might stand a chance. So people might think uh, that it's going to be, oh God, you know, Kevin Owens might win here. He might be getting pushed, but that just depends on how much he gets pushed, if that makes sense. Fantasy booking this is all well and good, but you can't rely on fan reactions when doing a fantasy booking. I just have to hope that that happens, but that's minor anyway. So the reason I want the fans to think that Kevin Owens has a chance is because for months it's being rumoured now that The Rock will come back at WrestleMania to fight Roman Reigns. Now, I don't think that's going to happen uh, in real life. I honestly don't now because, I, in my opinion, without a crowd, I just don't see it happening. I think The Rock will return with a crowd. But that's what I want people to be thinking. I want people to be thinking exactly the same. So what else is Roman going to do at WrestleMania? Maybe if Kevin Owens takes the championship from him or Kevin Owens has a really good chance, they might get a rematch at Mania or something. People are trying to look into other options without The Rock. That is until the main event of the evening in the Royal Rumble match itself. Number 27, the Rock's music hits. If you smell, out comes the People's Champion at 27. And I have him win the whole thing. Now, that might be a controversial decision right there. But in my opinion, I've heard like rumours of, you know, some people saying like Big E could win. But I honestly don't see that happening. I don't see anyone currently on the roster that I think 
is a believable winner of the Rumble. I know they say normally the Rumble is meant to make you into a star, but I feel like you have to be a semi-star before that. Um, so Money in the Bank is one of them things where I personally feel you can be plucked out of obscurity and win. The Royal Rumble, on the other hand, I feel you need to have something going for you beforehand before you can win the Rumble. And this time round, I don't see anything like that. So I would have The Rock win. Normally, I'm against part-timers coming back and winning the Rumble. But in this occasion, I think it would be really cool for The Rock to come back and win. Especially because, you know, there's no fans. You need something big uh, to get that attraction for WrestleMania once again. So... Rock wins the Rumble. Final four in the Rumble, I would have be Big E, The Rock, Drew McIntyre, and the Rated R Superstar, Edge, if he's ready to go. Because then the final two, I'd want to be Rock and Edge, because that's just a, you know something I've always wanted to see. But Rock throws Edge over the top rope. The Rock wins the Royal Rumble. After that, he challenges Roman, uh, calls him out for a contract signing to basically say, you know what, let's make this official. Uh, but the main point of the feud here is Roman's been going around for months saying he's the head of the table. He's the tribal chief. Everyone's forgotten about The Rock. The Rock is technically the head of the table for the Samoan dynasty. So The Rock does not like the fact that Roman's going out and saying that he's the tribal chief and he's the head of the table when he feels personally it's him. So that's the main, like, it's sort of bragging rights, I guess you can say, for this feud. You know, the winner gets to say that they're the head of the table. Uh, but after that, you know, we get The Rock come out, cut a promo, as he does, saying, I won the Royal Rumble, da 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 da, -da all this stuff. And then, bang, gets attacked by an unknown person. You look, it's not Roman Reigns. It's the returning, making his return to the ring from the commentary table, Samoa Joe attacks The Rock, Coquina Clutch beats him down. Samoa Joe has joined Roman Reigns. Now, this is big because I would quite like to see Reigns and Joe go one on one for the title, but I think it would be better if straight away, because Joe is sort of a bit of a heel anyway, he just understands that he needs to fall in line. He understands the hierarchy and he gets that he should be. Roman Reigns is like main bodyguard, I guess you could say. So Joe just joins Roman Reigns straight away. And that sets up a little mini feud uh, for Elimination Chamber, The Rock versus Samoa Joe. You know, shake off the ring rust, get a one-on-one -on -one match with someone as experienced, as good as Samoa Joe. I think that would be a really good first match back. So like I previously mentioned, Elimination Chamber. Now The Rock has already come out. And the, right, here's the thing with the Chamber. There's a certain way I think it should work. Either... A number one contender is announced or the champion defends the belt. That's how it should be. That's how it used to be back in the early days. So The Rock has picked Roman for WrestleMania, which means that Roman has to defend the Universal Championship in the chamber to make sure whether or not it's going to be him going to Mania or not. Then the WWE Championship, that's a number one contender's elimination chamber where the winner will face whoever's the champion, in this case, Randy. So I have got the elimination chamber consisting of Roman Reigns, Rey Mysterio, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Lars Sullivan, and finally, Alistair Black. That's the Elimination Chamber lineup. But before that match, we've got The Rock versus Samoa Joe, where The Rock goes over beating Samoa Joe. So he's establishing himself now as like, I'm ready for the Tribal Chief. So that's what he thinks. But we've got the Elimination Chamber match, Roman, of course, beats everyone. He retains the Universal Championship once again in the Elimination Chamber. And now we move on to WrestleMania. Both men, The Rock and Roman, it's going to be official. They're going to fight. So we get a contract signing attempt. Now in the contract signing, Roman says, you know what? You may have beaten Samoa Joe, but I still don't, I, I still don't deem you as worthy. You still aren't worthy to fight the Tribal Chief. So you have to beat the Usos together. Same as Kevin Owens, but Kevin Owens lost. Two on one handicap match. Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso on SmackDown this is, not pay-per-view. I want to make it established that The Rock is actually competing on SmackDown. I want it to be known that if The Rock is winning the Rumble, he's going to fight on all the shows. From the Rumble to Mania, he's going to be there for the long run. He's going to be full-time during that time. Uh, that saves it. So, you know, 
people like Lesnar, they come back at the Rumble, then they show up on Raw here and there, but they, ne they never actually compete on Raw. They're like pay-per-view exclusive. No. Rock shows that he's there. It's, you know, SmackDown's his show anyway, so he will compete. But he beats the Usos, and that moves us on to the next week, where we get another contract signing attempt. This time, Roman Reigns says to him, OK, you deemed yourself as worthy, but I will sign this contract under one condition. If you beat me, Rock... You win my Universal Championship and you cement your name as the head of the table. You're the tribal chief and I will fall in line. However, Rock, if I beat you, you must retire from WWE. You retire from professional wrestling altogether and we never see you compete in a ring again. Now, The Rock is confident, because why wouldn't he be? It's The Rock. The Rock's like, you know what? Absolutely. Signs the contract. It's official. At WrestleMania, it is title versus career. Tribal Chief versus The Rock. If Roman Reigns beats The Rock, he retires for good. So WrestleMania comes around. We get Roman Reigns versus The Rock in the main event of WrestleMania 37, hopefully in Hollywood, where it's meant to be, The Rock's backyard these days. So we get a big main event feel from this. This could quite possibly be The Rock's final WWE match ever. And it is. So I would have these guys go about 40, 45 minutes. It's the main event. You've got to go home strong. And they put on a banger of a match in the words of Jim Ross an absolute slobber knocker of a match it's amazing uh you know up there one of the greatest main events of all time at Wrestlemania but in the end after three spears Roman Reigns pins rock one two three and then after that we literally get confetti we get the Samoan family come out Samoa Joe Jimmy and Jey Uso Afa Sika they all come out they're all holding Roman Reigns up high with the Universal Championship and then finally The Rock gets up looks Roman in the eyes shakes his hand raises his hand and says you're the man you're the tribal chief I understand that now shakes his hand taps him on the back and says you know Look after this place because I'm done. WWE belongs to you now. And The Rock leaves and that's that. We never see him compete in the ring again. And then Roman Reigns goes on to be the tribal chief. Now, wrestling fans these days have no patience. You know, long title reigns are something we don't get anymore because fans get bored. They say, no, I want to see someone else with the championship. But in my opinion, the tribal chief gimmick is god tier it is fantastic i love it i love the work roman reigns is doing right now and i want to see him hold the universal championship for a long long time like a lesnar reign i'm talking because we want it to be at the end where we are you know we're not getting bored but we wouldn't mind seeing someone new that means every single championship match has high stakes when that title reign gets longer once roman beats the rock it's as if he's invincible. He can beat anyone. You can have Cena come back and challenge him. He won't win. You can have Randy challenge him. You can have Braun challenge him. You can have Triple H challenge him. They won't win. Roman Reigns is the top dog until maybe even the next WrestleMania when, you know, hopefully a new star on the rise at that point can come and beat him. But that is my fantasy booking for The Rock versus Roman Reigns. What do you guys think in the comments section down below? How do you guys think it should go if it does happen? I'm still not sure. You know, it's been rumoured for so long that it's going to happen, but I honestly think no fans, no Rock. So we're just going to have to wait and see. I really want it to happen. I would love to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania in Hollywood. I think the story writes itself. It's going to be fantastic. But once again, I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to fantasy book any more uh, like wrestling stories. Uh, and yeah, once again, please be sure to give this video a like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.